fact that not only are five people dead, he was planning a mass shooting. We've all had difficult times with our families, but can you imagine waking up one day and deciding to end it all? This is the tragic story of Nehemiah Griejo's family of five. Nehemiah was just 15 years old when he decided to take the life of his mother, father, and three younger siblings. After leaving a nightmare in his home, he went straight to church and surrendered. It's a really chilling story, so without further ado, let's dive into the teen who killed his entire family of five, then went to church. Nehemiah Griejo was born in 1997 as the first child of Greg and Sarah, but not the first child of Greg. His dad had five children from a previous marriage, and he would go on to have five more with his second wife, Sarah. But that's not the most curious thing about Greg's past. Greg had fallen into a life of and gangs after a stint in the 82nd Airborne Division, and was later transformed when he became a Christian while in jail in California in the early 1990s. That's right, Greg had a troubled past himself, but he decided to put it to good use becoming a jail minister and doing this job for 13 years at the Bernalillo County Metropolitan Detention Center. According to his family, Greg grew up in extreme poverty with his mother, brother, and two sisters near Avenida Cesar Chavez and 8th Street Southwest. Although Greg renounced his criminal past, he was still keen on having a traditional family, and that often entailed being tough, especially on the boys. His eldest daughter, Annette, said he liked his daughters to have long hair because he thought it looked pretty, and he liked his sons to be tough. Greg and his wife, Sarah, were pretty strict parents, according to his family. From a very young age, the children were involved in the church community at Calvary of Albuquerque. Greg worked there as a pastor for years until a falling out. Greg's children also weren't allowed to date until a later age, and Greg kept guns in the house, claiming the family needed to be prepared in case of a burglary. This was the excuse for Greg to teach his young children how to use guns. One of the Griejo's neighbors described Greg in a most chilling way. I think he was a tyrant, and the, the kids under that type pressure. I didn't see any sign of love among the a tough description, but it just might explain what happened in January 2013. On the night of January 19th, 2013, Nehemiah picked up his father's .22 caliber rifle and went into his parents' bedroom. Only his mother, Sarah, was there sleeping, as Greg was working night shifts at the time. First, he shot his mother in the head. He later claimed that he was frustrated with his mother after they'd had a fight from the previous evening. Shortly after he committed this horrible act on his mother, at around 1 a.m., Nehemiah texted a picture of his mother's body to his 12-year-old girlfriend. She also happened to be a secret from his family, as they disapproved of their children dating. The gunshot also woke up Nehemiah's brother, Zephaniah. He came into the parents' bedroom and asked Nehemiah what was going on. Nehemiah calmly told his nine-year-old brother that he had just ended their mother's life. Zephaniah didn't believe him, so Nehemiah lifted his mother's head, a very gory sight at that point, to show his brother. Zephaniah became immediately upset, and Nehemiah didn't want to hear any of it. He proceeded to sh his little brother in the head as well, then went over to his little sister's bedroom. He did the same to the five-year-old Yael and the two-year-old Angela in the head. But the night was not over for Nehemiah. He switched weapons, this time taking his dad's AR-15 semi-automatic and quietly waiting for his dad to come home. At around 5 a.m., Greg came home from an overnight shift at the Albuquerque Rescue Mission, the homeless shelter he had been working at. Nehemiah let him walk around the house for a bit to realize what had just happened, and then giving him the same fate as the rest of his family. But this was not the end of Nehemiah's night of terror. Investigators believe the boy wasn't done yet, saying he reloaded the AR-15 and the 22 caliber rifle and put them with more ammo into the family minivan. Investigators say he wanted to come to this Walmart. Why? According to the criminal complaint, 
to murder more people in a populated area and then die in a gunfight with police. But for some reason, Nehemiah changed his mind and decided to drive to the local church first. There, he met his 12-year-old girlfriend. After ending his entire family, Nehemiah and his girlfriend hung out at the church's skate park, basketball courts, and local bookstore. Apparently, Nehemiah told his girlfriend to tell people that his whole family died in a car accident. Obviously, she knew what he had done since he had sent her a picture of his dead mother. Later that afternoon, Pastor Justin Marbury felt something was off. There were no signs of Nehemiah's usually present family, and Nehemiah was acting odd. As I'm watching out for the, the church, for the people here, and part of that is paying attention. Do you think paying attention made a difference here? I think uh, taking it seriously and following through did. The pastor asked Nehemiah what had happened to his family, and all the boy could say was that his family was dead. Apparently, Nehemiah said he went home and discovered his family had died. However, he couldn't explain why he didn't call the police. Pastor Justin immediately notified police officer Vince Harrison, who ironically was just leading a drill on what to do if a shooter goes loose inside a church. As soon as Vince saw Nehemiah, he realized he was guilty. Just his behavior was real quiet and cold and a matter of fact, and the red flag started going up. Vince and Justin then took Nehemiah in Vince's car and drove straight to his house to check if what he was saying was true. A mile from the house, Vince knew what Nehemiah had done. He told him to stay in the car and went over to the house himself. What he found there was the stuff of nightmares. Thinking about it, uh, you know, yeah, does this send chills up my spine? I'm not sure if he came here for help. Oh, this is what he knew. This was his life away from his home. Indeed, that was the question that bothered everyone. If Nehemiah's plan was to continue his killing spree until the police shot him down, why did he decide to stop by the church first? Was this a silent cry for help? Well, luckily, his church pit stop meant that Vince and Justin could put an end to what could have become a town-wide mass murder. <sighs> As soon as he was arrested, Nehemiah Griejo admitted to the murders. He added that he had thoughts about taking his own life and about taking other people's lives. According to the police, his tone of voice was calm and chilling, except when he was talking about his video games. This was when his face lightened. Apparently, Nehemiah was very much into violent video games at the time, and he had become a pretty quiet teenager. Perhaps, incredibly, what was left of Nehemiah's family supported him fiercely throughout the following months. His sister Annette, his aunt Regina, his uncle Eric, all spoke for giving Nehemiah a second chance and making him look like a scared kid who didn't know what he was doing. His uncle Eric, who is Greg's brother and a former Democratic senator said, it's clear to those of us who know and love him that something went terribly wrong. Whether it was a mental breakdown or some deeper undiagnosed psychological issue, we can't be sure yet. What we do know is that none of us, even in our wildest nightmare, could have imagined that he could do something like this. Although it's certain something clicked in Nehemiah's head one day, this was not an impulsive mass murder. It was premeditated, and his original plan was much worse. Nehemiah reportedly told the police that he planned to shoot his mother, his father, his siblings, and his girlfriend's family before driving to the Walmart and shooting everyone there. That was his plan, and apparently, he had made dark comments to people around him for about a week before actually doing it. Yeah. We don't think this is what a confused teenager behaves like. But his family found a way to turn events against the police. When he was arrested, Nehemiah agreed to speak with the investigators without an attorney or an adult present. The interview lasted about 90 minutes, during which Nehemiah told the police about his love of video games, including Modern Warfare and Grand Theft Auto. He also told the police about his big mass murder plan. But Eric Griejo criticized the police for letting Nehemiah give a statement without advice from an adult. No lawyer, no adult, no access to any family members? He makes a statement. If that's not damaging enough, for us, the hardest thing is that became fact. The police presented Nehemiah's confession as evidence that he had planned to go on a spree after murdering his parents. Of course, that added to a much higher charge. Eric added that if any of Nehemiah's family members would have been inside the interview room with him, they would have told him how to formulate his answers better. As far as we know, that whole narrative that he was going on this grandiose sh was based on a scared 15-year-old in the middle of the night in the sheriff's department. No parent, no adult, no lawyer. 
Should he have said it? Of course not. If any of us would have been there, we would have told him to just shut up. What exactly was Eric doing? Picturing his nephew as a scared 15-year-old? He had just butchered his brother, sister-in-law, and three nephews and nieces. First of all, Eric was a politician, and in his statement, he asked the media not to use Nehemiah as a pawn for ratings or to score political points. Second of all, Nehemiah's family didn't want him tried as an adult, and their pleas worked as Nehemiah was initially tried as a juvenile. A children's court judge initially found Nehemiah to be amenable to treatment and sentenced him as a juvenile after he pleaded guilty to two counts of second-degree murder and three counts of intentional child abuse resulting in death. But in March 2018, as Nehemiah was getting close to his 21st birthday, people started debating whether he should be released so soon. The legal experts did not agree that any teen should get a lighter sentence just because he's a teen. There are lots of arguments here that teens aren't fully developed and can't be held accountable for their crimes. What do you say? Yes, that's, that is true. That does not apply in this case. This is somebody that's going to act in an outrageous way again. There's no doubt in my mind. The legal experts criticized the law for making it so easy for dangerous teens to leave prison on their 21st birthdays. Dr. Drew suggested holding the judge and defense attorneys accountable in case Nehemiah goes out and kills again. Indeed, before long, the Attorney General's office appealed the decision to let Nehemiah go free. Just 11 days before Nehemiah was set to be released, the New Mexico Court of Appeals ordered the judge to hold another hearing and take into account the horrifying nature of the teen's crimes. Chris, and this is what the Attorney General is doing on this appeal. The focus, the heinous nature of this crime, the fact two adults, three children dead, the fact that it was premeditated, the fact that not only are five people dead, he was planning a mass shooting. Nehemiah was finally tried as an adult and given three life sentences and another seven years for killing both of his parents. As Nehemiah got credit for the almost seven years already spent in prison, he will serve another 30 years before he could be released on parole. But once again, his attorney and family are defending Nehemiah, saying he was open to changing his ideas and behavior. Nehemiah's aunt, Regina, particularly speaks up for mental health, and for seeing Nehemiah as a person whose mental health has been improving over the last few years. First of all, he's young, and cognitively, and, and to me, he's a child. And then secondly, there's some mental impairment. Regina went on to help Nehemiah recover. Nehemiah was diagnosed with psychosis and dissociative disorders, and has started taking medication. Now he has a full range of emotion. He's missing his family. He obviously cries a lot about what happened. Regina insisted that Nehemiah should get treatment in a professional mental health care facility, not prison, and that there truly is hope for her nephew. She advises all parents to watch out for their children's mental health, to spot and address any problems before they create a full-blown crisis. This could happen to you. I would advise parents to get smart on mental health. We're doing it now, after the crisis do it before the crisis. Indeed, Nehemiah might just be a tragic case resulting from tough parenting, violent video games, and guns in the house. Perhaps his family could have avoided this massacre if they knew what was going on inside his mind. But whatever the case or age, Nehemiah must atone for his actions. Should Nehemiah serve his full sentence? And is there any hope for redemption in his case? 